Hello everybody, my name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. How are you guys doing today? And you guys know what this is? This is a charge controller, right? And this is a high voltage charge controller. And right here is also a charge controller, but this time it's a low voltage charge controller. So what's the difference between these two guys? So when you hear that a charge controller is a high voltage charge controller, what does it mean? And when you also hear that a charge controller is a low voltage charge controller, what exactly are the differences? What are the advantages and what are the disadvantages? Every single information you need to know right here. If you stay long enough, I'll be right back. Welcome back everybody. My name is Ikin I'm from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. If you haven't subscribed guys, kindly click on that subscription button. Always remember, this is how you support this work that we're doing and we appreciate it. So let's draw a line quickly on what's a high voltage charge controller and what's a low voltage charge controller. And we're gonna start with this dude right here. Now, this is a high voltage charge controller. So it means that its operational PV input voltage is pretty much from 60 volts to around 600 volts. Yes, you have 600 volts charge controller. And what makes this dude right here to a low voltage charge controller is that its operating PV voltage ranges between 60 and 150 volts. So that's a low voltage. So what exactly are the differences between these two charge controllers? Which one is better? What are the things I need to know about this charge controller? The first thing you need to know is safety, all right? Because this guy right here, which is a high voltage charge controller, is very, very dangerous. It can kill you. <laughs> and this low voltage is not dangerous, so it's safe to use, all right? So now, if you are doing a connection with this charge controller, you need to be extremely very careful. First and foremost, you need to have all the protective gears. You need to wear a non-conductive gloves to ensure that you don't have contact with the terminals of the electricity while you're doing the connection. Imagine one second being jolted by 600 or 500 volts. <laughs> That's crazy. That actually happened to me, but it wasn't as much as 500 volts. Otherwise, I will not be here talking to you. <laughs> I went for an installation. I don't know, I was just talking and I just can't remember exactly what happened. My, my hands touched the battery terminals. Oh my God, it was crazy. For a while, I lost my speech. I just sat down and I was thinking about my entire life, how I had forgotten to do my will so that I can will out some things to my son or my wife. <laughs> it was absolutely crazy. So you don't want that to happen to you because this guy is very dangerous. So it's operating on a very high voltage. So when you're doing your connections, you have to be extremely very careful. It can also result in fire. That's something that can happen. All right, imagine the negative and the positive terminal bridging together. That's crazy. <laughs> so think about it. So when you're doing a connection with this high voltage, it's very important that you take all the, you know, protective measures and you have to be extremely very careful to know where the negative is supposed to be, to know where the positive is supposed to be, and all of that. But for the low voltage charge controllers, it's not exactly that. It's pretty much safe to work with. Even when it touches you, it's pretty much like a tingle. It's not like a very serious shock. And from my own experience, the only way it shocks you is when your hands are on the both terminals. That you're holding the negative on the left and you're holding the positive on the right. That's when it's gonna give you a jolt. And even at that, it's not life-threatening. But if this happens to you at 500 volts, you're gonna be going to the other side. <laughs> so let's look at savings, cost, and wires. If you're working with a high voltage charge controller or even a high voltage system like your inverters, it saves you a lot of cables because you don't have a lot of current traveling. So that will make you to size down on the amount of cables that you're gonna need. Because if you're doing connections that requires a lot of current, that means your cable sizing has to be very big. The diameter has to be really very big. Okay, but if you're using a high voltage charge controller, you're definitely gonna be using very little, very small uh, wires because you don't have much of current traveling in the system. But if you're working with a low voltage charge controller, you're gonna have to use a lot of currents because you're gonna be doing a lot of parallel in your connections. 
all right and a lot of parallel comes with a lot of current increase in your installations all right that is going to require a lot of cables and it's also going to require uh, very big cables at that and if you're working with the high voltage charge controllers it saves you cables when you're also doing your connections on your solar panels that's your pv because you no longer have to be doing the interconnections and doing parallels it's pretty much going to be a straight line so each of the solar panel is connecting to the other one to the other one to the other one and just like that so you don't require so much of cable and at the end of the day when you're done with the connections and you're sending the cables down into the system you're going to require a very very small diameter of cable so take for instance you're using 465 watt solar panels and you have like 13 pieces of it and you do all of that connect them in series the current is pretty much going to be around let's say 9 amps or 10 amps max so that means you don't have a lot of current traveling in the wire so you don't need a very big diameter cable what you need is a very small diameter cable like a 10 mm to be able to send the energy down into the system anything around 10 mm cables or 10 mm diameter cables is pretty fine so that saves you a huge cost you can imagine in a situation where you would have used a 50 mm cable and you're now using a 10 mm cable so you're saving a lot of cost so it saves you on the size of the cable and it also saves you on the quantity of cable so you see you're sizing down on the diameter of the cables and you're also sizing down on the quantity of cables that you require for that particular installation but for this guy it's a totally different ball game you're gonna need a lot of wires to interconnect your solar panels in parallel because you will need a lot of current to be able to show it up you know the principles of wattage so i don't have to explain that to you so there's going to be that a lot of interconnections going on if you have to use the low voltage charge controllers to do your connections so you most definitely have to use very big cables to be able to size for the current that is going to be traveling in the wires so if you have to mount your solar panels a distance from where your controlling devices are which is your batteries and your inverters and charge controller you do know that the more the energy travels in your dc connections it drops okay so uh, by the time the energy gets all the way from the solar panel and comes right down to where you have your controlling devices it must have lost a significant amount of energy but in your high voltage charge controllers that's not the case because you have low current and a lot of voltage and the voltage does not drop as much as current the current drops as the distance progresses but that's not the same case for voltage all right the voltage doesn't drop as much in fact in most cases it's very insignificant all right so that's one very good advantage of the high voltage charge controllers but that's not the same for a low voltage charge controller because you're making use of a lot of current in your connections all right so as the distance travels you're going to have to lose a lot of energy before it gets to the controlling devices that's why it's very important that if you're using a low voltage charge controller you must have to mount your solar panels close to where your controlling devices are the ease of wirings and preservations of the entire energy and getting the full value of the energy that you've invested on and i'll give you guys an example so if you have for instance nine solar panels and you want to use a low voltage charge controller you'll definitely have to do three in series all right so that means you're going to have three in each string and sometimes when you have a whole lot of connections for people who do a lot of connections and you have a lot of parallels in your connections sometimes you could forget to connect a particular string so you're complaining that the system is not charging very well but you don't know that the guy that went up to the roof forgot to connect some strings but that would never happen with a high voltage charge controller you know why because the entire solar panels are connected on a straight line that's connected on a series connection all right so from the solar panel a to the solar panel z all are connected in series all right so what you're practically doing is that you're trying to show up the amount of volumes that you have in the system to be able to push it up to a high voltage all right thereby maintaining the current just the way it is so you have less current but a lot of voltage so when you have the solar panels all connected in series there's no situation of i forgot to connect one solar panel i forgot to connect three i forgot to connect six no all the solar panels are all going to be connected because they're all in series if you don't connect anyone it's not going to function it's not going to work so in that way you get the full value of your solar panels because these things happen human beings are the ones who do these connections and sometimes 
they can get tired of there and they just forget to connect a particular string of solar panel and that affects the overall efficiency of the solar panel you've spent way too much money trying to put together for your energy use. And for the ease of wiring, you know, it's so beautiful when you're just connecting from the negative to the positive, from the negative to the positive, and you're just lining up the entire solar panel. It's so beautiful. You can be whistling and be singing your best love song as you're doing that, because it's very so easy and so convenient for you to do that. But when you're, when you're doing a parallel connection, it's not so beautiful. <laughs> it can be very stressful and you're bound to forget. Now, the high voltage charge controllers are used for industrial applications of places where you have intensive energy applications, places, industries, factories, places where you need a lot of energy. So the best thing that is advised for anyone to use, if you know your owners, is to use a high voltage charge controller or high voltage system. In that way, it is ease of wiring. You're not dealing with a lot of current, like I've said before. So it makes it very convenient. It makes it a lot easy. It makes it easy for you to be able to control the currents because the currents can also be very dangerous when you have a lot of current in the system. But with the low voltage charge controllers, it's very inadequate for you to use that for very high intensive energy projects or factories or industries or places where you have heavy machines that you need to be able to power with like large volumes of energy. So this will be a very bad choice for you to make in that applications or that solar design that you're doing. But the high voltage charge controllers, high voltage solar systems, high voltage inverters, very adequate for very high intensive energy applications or industries and factories. So for countries that have the grid tire arrangement, um, high voltage inverters are mostly used for grid tire arrangement and in places also that you're going to have to use micro inverters to be able to convert energy straight from the DC state, right from the solar panel where it is all the way down and then straight connected to the power companies uh, so that they can harvest your excess energy and reward you for that. So the high voltage inverters are most adequate for that kind of situation. But this guy, mm -mm, no. <laughs> now, this one is debatable. So one of the beautiful things about the high voltage charge controllers is that since its power depends a whole lot on the voltage range. Now, in situations when you have the cloudy days, when you don't have so much of a sunshine, when you're experiencing low light, it tends to work effectively, all right? Because the voltage doesn't drop as much as current does, all right? Any little low light situation that you have that triggers all the way down, the current is always the first to go down, but not the voltage. So that means you'll be able to generate more energy if you're using a high voltage charge controllers in very, very cloudy situations, rainy days and all of that, and you don't have so much of sunshine or you have low light situations and you don't have the constant presence of the sunshine, you'll be able to generate a decent amount of energy, way more than the low voltage charge controllers can. All right, so they all have the advantages and they have their disadvantages. So if there's anything that I'm missing, my friend, put it in the comment section. Let me get to know. I want to learn too. There's a whole lot that I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so very much, guys, for being part of this. If you haven't subscribed, please take your time to click on that subscription button, all right? We'll appreciate it a whole lot. Thank you so very much. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to share, and do not forget to like. See you guys in the next video.